this video I'm going to run through all of the games in Humble Indie Bundle 13 starting with Teleglitch which is actually a free game you just have to put your email address in to get it um, it's obviously a retro inspired game it's it's top down as you can see uh, works with the controller or the mouse and the keyboard uh, you're basically trapped on a, a space station or something a lone survivor and you have to uh, fight your way out uh, you can see that from the point of view of, of character you can only see things actually in your line of sight uh, so this is just the tutorial level you, you have to uh, locate various bits of equipment like in a minute I'll figure out where the uh, guns and ammo are And then you can, you know, use that to shoot bad guys. The levels are procedurally generated, so uh, it's possible that, well, the intention is that it will not be the same each time you play through it, and it, it's roguelike in that once you die, you die. With each game being a bit unique. Uh, I generally have a lot of trouble with these top-down, what do you call them, dual stick shooter type things. Even using the mouse and the keyboard, I think here I'll always use the controller. So I don't think I'll be playing that one too much. Uh, this game, Mutant Blobs Attack, is a puzzle platformer. You're a blob. There I am. There you are. I am. And you've escaped from a research facility. And your goal is to uh, eat stuff so that you can grow. We'll see in a minute. The size will be all displayed on the screen. Here's some stuff to eat. So you grow a bit. Oh, don't get squashed. And the idea is you have to eat a cork which will let you into the next level which you know, obviously slightly contrived but there's the cork so at the minute I'm not big enough to eat the cork so I need to I need to find more stuff to eat to get bigger so physics based puzzles you're floating there's also sort of hidden areas and uh, you have fellow fellow blobs to uh, to rescue. I, I did find this game quite fun, but also in the light levels it gets a bit frustrating, especially with the control level where you have to start you have to start controlling platforms with the second stick. You know, the second stick and all that stuff it always gets me. Eldritch. This is like a, a voxel based uh, exploration exploration puzzle game. Again, it's a roguelike, they're very popular. Uh, basically, you, you're in a library, and by reading books in the library, you get transported to these uh, Lovecraftian dungeons, which you then have to uh, work your way around figure out what's going on, avoid enemies, pick up weapons, and then, you know, I presume kill enemies. I I really just started it up just to have a look. I didn't really get very far. I think this video will go on just long enough to see me die. Uh, there I go. Oops, fall down the thing. Oh, get attacked by a bad guy. Can't open that. Try to open this door, missed it. Try to open that door, died. So there you go. Help was depleted, and then you return to the library. So the novelist is a lot less, uh, a lot less violent, I guess is the what, what you might say. Uh, you're basically a ghost or spectral figure. Uh, so there's two modes, you can either play in a mode where 
where they the family can see you in which case you have to avoid avoid them seeing you or you can play in the mode I the easy mode where you're invisible to family so basically you're walking around you can possess light fixtures to travel and are there any other kids if you walk up behind people we'll have to find out you can uh, you can enter their memories and then you can search their memories and the goal is to find out what's bothering everybody and then guide the family towards a solution um, I've, I've not got an awful lot of patience with these these non-action games um, I guess I will play it a little bit more but, but probably not too much. So next, oh yeah, found all memories. Right next is Risk of Rain, which is uh, another retro retro platformer with RPG elements. On the little character you can just see on the screen. Uh, on each level you have to find the teleporter, which is that thing there. I'm just finding it. And then survive until the teleporter is active. Once you start the teleporter, some some massive enemies appear, like that giant robot. Uh, it's not a spoiler to let you know that that robot will kill me in the end, even though I do manage to kill some things at the cost of quite a lot of health. Variety of bad guys. You can shoot them. I don't think I'm making much of a dent on that. That big robot. When you shoot them, you get experience and credits and other bonuses. I'm doing a lot of running away at the minute. And I'm surrounded. Oh, I did kill some things. There you go. Right last though, my health is at zero. The planet has killed you. So this game could be quite a lot of fun, I think. Uh, allows for four four player co-op. And you get four copies of the game as part of the humble bundle. So right, Jazz Punk. This game I thought was hilarious. It's a sort of a sixties themed comedy adventure first person. Uh, I'm walking around, I'm, I'm currently trying to infiltrate the, um, the Soviet Embassy. Uh, each level is littered with various um, things to discover. Yes, cells mating, sort of looking through the microscope. <laughs> so there's mini games all over the place. So you can see Space Invaders. going to defeat the Space Invaders just because I can. It's not a very good Space Invaders game to be fair. But yeah, it's, it's very funny. The art style is, is uh, it's quite nice. Obviously an indie game, not, not a AAA realistic art, but it's, it's a sort of cartoony looking Cartoony looking game. I really enjoyed it. I found the, the humour quite, quite you know, matched my sense of humour. And uh, obviously various various Easter eggs and hidden hidden things like like the um, Space Invaders game. So sort of in-game messaging is just overlaid. I see the camera smoking there. Nice touch. So when you need to know something, a message basically appears in the 3D environment. <laughs> Sawyer's, Sawyer's one rocket there. It's a highly entertaining game, and yes, some puzzle elements. Yeah, right, Amnesia Machine for Pigs is a uh, first-person horror adventure.
not really my thing, to be fair. I did play it a bit last night, and, you know, basically it scared the pants off me. But I am easily scared. I can't watch horror films with my eyes open. As you can see, it's, uh, it's purposely dark. The sound is quite good. As far as, you know, the haunted house feel, there's always sort of sounds just outside your vision. I suspect if you're into this sort of game, it would be it would be quite fun, especially at the, the value value price as part of the humble bundle. You can pick things up and manipulate the environment. Papa, Papa, this oh, way. It's flashing. I've got a ball. I throw the ball. It doesn't really do much of any use. Yes, doors, doors sound like they're shutting just as you get up the stairs and stuff like that. Not one of the games I can play at night. So, in complete contrast to this, Oli Oli, which is a, a skateboarding game. Uh, you basically, controls are fairly simple. You press a button to skate, you press a button to jump, you press a button to land. And you wiggle a stick about to achieve achieve different different combinations. That was Molly. Timed it quite well. Front side shove it. Oh, messed that up. This is the easiest level. I found that quite frustrating enough. That was better. That was pretty good. So oh. See, got to the end and then crashed. So each level you have to achieve five things to uh, unlock further levels. This is another run where I managed some better tricks. There we go, not bad. I think I've got my best score. Although, given the target score is 20,000, you can see I'm a long way, long way from that as yet. I think this is originally a, a PS Vita game, or perhaps PlayStation Personal. Vita, let's call it Vita. Perfect for that sort of thing. Quick diversion. Nothing in depth. Um, insanely Twisted Shadow Planet. This is this is a game that's that's won quite a few awards and stuff. Has has award-winning soundtrack. It's, it's basically a. a uh, a physics based puzzle game where you control this robot and it has it has a number of uh, you know you've got a, a robot arm that you can switch to various different attachments that I'm doing here I'm going to try and shoot these things just because and that has no effect whatsoever see so on Steam this is, this is like a 1.5 gig download, I think, which I, which I assume is sort of music assets and, uh, and cutscenes and stuff, because the game itself doesn't seem like it would require an awful lot of um, an awful lot of um, stuff. Right, so I figured out that shooting it isn't going to help after trying to shoot it in various different places. So now we'll notice that. There's some rocks lying about here, so I wonder what happens if you pick up the rock and feed it to one of these things. Uh, unusual accurate joystick control. There we go, so I found the solution. Oopsie. That was more luck than judgement. Yes, it's a reasonably slow paced game. Um, again, using both control sticks, you use one, one, one stick to move the ship around and one stick to move the arm around. Uh, checkpoint there. Uh, Tower of Guns. And that's not quite a procedurally generated shooter, it's more of a, it's a set of elements that will be randomly added to different levels to make sure each game is different. 
gun and one mod to start each game. And then basically, it's a roguelike. The goal is to survive all the way to the end and shoot the boss. This is like one of the early levels, obviously. I'm generally not really good. You pick up various bits and pieces, like there's a power up, some coins, the blue crystals let you level you up there on the side. It is, it is basically a load of frantic shooting. I quite enjoyed it. I ended up playing it, playing it a fair bit, but you know, out of all of the games, I think there's 12 games in Humble Bundle. This is the one I've probably played, uh, uh, paid the most at this point. So I'm just collecting all the different bits and pieces. The next level is through that door there. You have to shoot it to get it open. I'm just going to go around and check for uh, hidden areas, bonus, bonus um, tokens. I think there are some at the top here. Yeah, quite a lot of these. Get that down, we're we'll going to the next area. Oh, that's a thing to shoot. things and down there at the bottom there is a uh, a bonus thing so uh, moving on the last game is Shadowrun Returns so this was uh, a successful Kickstarter project it's based on the Shadowrun games from the 90s Basically a role-playing role-playing game, although the plot is fairly linear. There is there's some some sort of scope for for explore, exploration and discovery. So it's quite story-driven. The characters have have a load of, have a load of dialogue, but then there's also these uh, tactical tactical battle moments which is one just coming up now here's some guys so if you've seen a uh, XCOM enemy unknown it's a similar a similar sort of setup to that and if you have cover if you have weapons you can melee people uh, and as you go through the game you get to level up do various things. I'm just trying to find a place to put him where there'll be someone in cover. There's not really any way useful, is there? Uh, in the end, I've got a fairly good spot because I managed to put him there and kill anybody. Kill everybody, rather. I like how the, the prostitutes just stand there ignoring everything just at the bottom of the screen. Looking the other way. So I'm not... My character is the, the balding woman at the top there. Choose various different character types, um, and here we go. Successful, successful battle. Sorry, that, that was basically all 12 games in Humble Indie Bundle 13. Excellent value for money. Um, several very good games. I recommend you check it out.